Okay, these crabby sons of bitches over here, they're going down. One of them just died when I pressed the record button, so I guess they didn't really want to know what the wrath of a two-shot explosive gorse rifle feels like. But hopefully we can get the queen to spawn, because I really want to kill a queen with this. I just want to kill a queen. Hopefully she's not dead by the time I get there. Oh, thank you, game. G'day, this is Captain Uben. This is a two-shot explosive prime gorse rifle. Now, full disclosure, prepare the dislike buttons. This is a duplicated weapon. It is a copy, but the receiver and also the ammunition for this, or the capacitors, are not. I actually farmed those during a stream. So I put a little bit of time into this weapon before bringing it before you today. And starting off at 633 damage, that is our damage without perk. So you could probably get away with using it just like that. But we're not going to do that. We're going to push this thing to its very limits and then some. So first of all, let's get some rifleman perks happening. There's expert. We've got master rifleman there. And last but not least, regular rifleman. And in intelligence, we'll chuck in demolitions expert. And for luck, we'll go ahead and boost our damage a little bit more with bloody mess. Because we're not going to be using bats all that much. So I've just swapped out the four leaf clover perk for bloody mess. And that gives us a respectable seven, 1750 damage. Yeah. I haven't really shown off what kind of attachments the Gorse Rifle has in Fallout 76, so I'll quickly go over them now. So basically, like Fallout 4, you've got the barrel here, which can be had the aligned, true or stabilized prefix or standard, and basically, they do not a lot, really. They increase your accuracy, range, recoil. They don't actually increase your damage like this top cover does back in Fallout 4, which is kind of strange. And the align stock is just to um, help out with the recoil a little bit. I could probably put on a true stock, but that will increase the weight a little bit. So I'm going to leave it as is. But generally, I like to put true on these things because having good hip fire accuracy is really overpowered on these weapons, especially when you don't feel like scoping in. So these capacitors are basically your magazine um, attachment point of this weapon. You can use them to improve or lower your magazine capacity and do a little bit of armor penetration if you feel like if you're using the perf rating that's the best armor penetration but generally the stinging ones are the ones you want to go for if you haven't got the prime capacitors because that's the only one of these that actually increase your damage unlike fallout 4 these don't actually do much and the optics are basically what you expect i think they're basically the same as they were back in fallout 4 although the short um, scopes have changed a little bit the short recon scope is strange because it's, it doesn't really zoom in at all so I always go for a medium scope with these things I feel like that's the best and we're going to go with a suppressor on the muzzle there's a compensator if you feel like it but a suppressor will make this thing look super boxy and also keep you hidden so there you go when crafting ammunition for this always remember to put the super duper and ammo smith perk on to increase your ammo output per component and going down to ultrasight ammo because this thing is a prime weapon you can tell this thing requires a little bit of pure crimson flux now the easiest way to get that and thankfully is going down to the uh, cranberry bog when people fight the scorch beast queen basically all of the cranberries lying around turn into pure crimson flux as well as a couple of other things but the cranberries are the easiest to see so fortunately getting this ammo is kind of easy also you'll notice that i'm making 54 per only one crimson flux so that's a whole a lot of mileage for just a couple of berries to be honest that's really good okay let's start off with the muties and uh, we don't need to charge this thing up when it comes to shooting these guys we do so much damage that yeah charging this up is not really necessary which is great because charging takes time and when you don't have to charge you can actually fire this thing pretty quickly and what that allows you to do is to quickly stack some adrenaline damage to get even more damage out of this like you'd really needed it but anyways we're going along we'll just have a quick check so plus 40 percent damage and that brings us to 2400 damage on a gorse rifle yeah okay um i don't know why they allowed the two shot and the explosive effect to um spawn on the same weapon but honestly i think it's a little bit ridiculous i think the game would be better without it to be honest as fun as they are these are to use it's cheap and it's not really fun so i wouldn't really mind if these things were taken out of the game also is that yep that's 60 percent extra damage bringing us to 2800 damage pretty much on the dot so yeah not a lot of things would be able to resist too much of those um two millimeter electromagnetic cartridges that you fire at it. Unfortunately, I can't see if the traces changed color because I, I had a feeling that 
a regular gorse rifle, the traces on it would change to a nice green color if you put the Ultra Sight Prime Receiver on, but it doesn't. Anyways, I'll stop yapping and we'll move on to something else. You probably don't have to even charge it up if you're killing bears. Nope, just one shots those boys too, okay. Okay, so here we are at Dolly Sod's campground. There's a bunch of enemies spawned, the game has just told us. They're gulpers. Good, I want to one-shot these guys, but I'm not going to do it by looking down the scope. I'm just going to hit by this just to see if this thing is actually accurate. And judging by the bloom of the crosshairs, it doesn't actually seem that bad. Also, it is nice to see little bits of gulper go everywhere with the bloody mess perk. That's something I've missed from Fallout, I suppose. I doubt we'll be able to get him from here, but I'm going to give it a shot. We actually did. Okay, looks like you can have sort of a precision weapon, although this thing is sort of tuned to have good hipfire accuracy thanks to the aligned stuff. It could be better with the true barrel and also uh, stock, but it doesn't really matter. I feel like this is quite enough, and there we go, I've just cleared it out already. Alrighty, we're in Scorch Beast territory again. So knowing this thing is actually kind of accurate whilst hip firing this thing to an extent, or at least compared to other two-shot weapons. I kind of want to test this out against the Scorch Beast, and luckily these Scorch gun zombies are around for me to just quickly stack some adrenaline on. How much are we at now, by the way? Plus 50%, that's all right. All right, what I want to do is kind of test this thing whilst using VATS, because I think VATS means you're hip-firing, and you're just getting an extra percentage of um, what you're actually supposed to hit them. All right. We are in danger now, which means no sneak attack criticals, but I could just get a nice shot on you. Hmm, okay. So, usually when using gorse rifles in VATS, the, uh, it takes a while to actually charge up the shots, and that can actually lead you to using a little bit more action points than what you'd like. So, if I'm gonna hit this guy fast and hard, I should probably get him just with non-charged up shots, although I am skipping out a little bit of damage. We're back into hidden now, so if he decides to actually attack us... Okay, I'm using the scope there. We'll just pull out of that. Oh, yeah, okay. That got him. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, I did charge that one up, though. I was sort of waiting him him to sort of stabilize, but, uh... <laughs> yep, we, we killed him. We killed him a lot. Okay, this time I'm going to kill the Mylurx, I swear. There's the Queen. Hopefully she doesn't die, um, like, by me looking at her. Because sometimes enemies spawn in, but then the game remembers that somebody else killed them. And then they die, so hopefully that doesn't happen. What's our adrenaline like, by the way? Plus 50%. I don't think we've got any other Mylurx to kill. So if we could line up a shot on the Queen's face, and then we one-shot her. Good stuff. Also, this armor's, um, it's, it's weird because it's all glowy in first person, but when you go back into third person, it's normal. They've done something weird with the textures there. Okay, I've just got myself some Psycho buff and a little bit of adrenaline, so let's see how we can do against this Scorch Beast. Almost got him. If you could hold still, that'd be good. I guess that's too much to ask from Batman. Also... <laughs> Yeah, that, that rat has no idea what kind of world of pain he's heading for. Alright, what'd you drop us, mate? He got us... nothing. Okay, here's a really good opportunity to strike, because he's just gonna sit there, which means if I can just creep up so we're in range, and kill him, hopefully in one shot, although he's only level 65, which is kind of disappointing. When I actually see the animation of them crawling out of the ground, they're always level 80, but whenever I encounter them just like this spawned in the overworld, they're just level 65. Okay, we're close at this point. He's probably going to go into caution in a second and spring up, so... About half his health, that's alright. We're not buffed by any Adrenaline or Psycho right now, so that is why we couldn't one-shot him. Not that it really made a difference, to be honest. He's still dead, and that's all that really matters at the end of the day now, isn't it? Hey look, a bunch of ghouls are fighting each other. I'd imagine one of these is in fact Scorch, so if you could just hold still whilst I... Damn it, I shot between his legs. There we go. That's what I wanted to happen. Okay, so somebody's started Scorched Earth again, so it looks like we'll be able to take out these guys, or this queen again. Now, they're put in a shit spot, honestly, because look at it. It's 
there, and we're, we're having to fight within all this shitty terrain, so hopefully it's not going to be too much of a problem. I should probably contribute to this fight, yes. Annoying thing about this fight is that they'll actually just dogpile like that, and yeah, this this prime capacitor, a wall it's doing a lot of damage, its ammo capacity is only 5, so it's a little bit um, quick to finish off its magazine and then reload, but what we'll do is we'll just get some shots in at the Queen. We're doing a tiny bit of damage to her health, we are in, back into caution now, all of the grognaks are running in there. There we go, there's some actual damage. And the nice little headshot there. Oh. Okay, Mr. Fog Crawler. That guy's only got a hazmat suit. You don't have to wear a hazmat suit here, bro. We're not in the radiation. Let's quickly finish off that. I should probably have charged it up. But what I'm going to do is actually jump up here because there's no way for the AIs to trail you here. So the only thing they can do is shoot at me. So they won't be staggering me anyway. Looks like he's mutated at this point. I'll pop on some Psycho buff to increase the damage a little bit. See? That dude. Now, judging by this thing's VAT accuracy, it doesn't seem too bad. I can actually hit these guys with fairly decent efficiency. Okay, we'll go for a reload. Ooh, looks like I got a ton of damage there, or at least it caught up to itself. Just check out my adrenaline at this moment. We'll go ahead and take out some more dudes, I reckon. And then, whilst she's facing us, we'll go ahead and get some easy headshots. Wish I could see the health bar right now. That'd definitely be good. But I don't think I'm doing much of the work here. Sure, I'm doing a lot of damage, but I'm not firing fast enough to keep up with all of the boys with explosive two-shot um, machine guns, which are probably duped, by the way. That's like the weapons going around right now. They're just, they're just... That's the meta. And this is why it's the meta, because you can cheese the Scorch Beast Queen like this. And again, I think something's wrong with her AI, because she's just sitting there taking it. Unless she's kind of into that sort of thing, I think she's a little bit on the glitch side. Okay. I wouldn't call that a Scorch Beast kill, as it is an assist. Also, what are you doing down there? Get out of here. Also, I hear a blood bug. You know what? I don't really give a shit. I'm going to go see what loot I got, and we'll friggin' do something else. And whilst you're passing through here, if you feel like you're in the need for some more ammunition for this particular weapon, you've got flash flares here, which actually give you violet flux instead. In fact, what you should actually do before even think about picking stuff up is actually chuck on the uh, green thumb perk, which lives in perception, and that means you can harvest twice as much, which is really, really good if you want to really stack together some... Um, Flux. So there you go, there's some violet flux. If you find yourself low on fluids, by the way, you can just drink it. Um, it'll actually give you disease resistance and a little bit of rads. Not as much rads as you might think, but um, I'm good for ammo right now and I can't be bothered farming because I've got some extra recording to do, but that's something to look out for if you're feeling a little bit dehydrated. Okay, let's see how Swan does against a two-shot explosive gorse rifle. Now, I don't think we can shoot him through the water, so we just have to tag him in the head there. Ah, oh, we missed somehow. And again. Strange. Weird. Oh, wait. There we go. Now he's got a collision. <laughs> Knocked his block off before he even finished screaming. Nice. That, that's kind of like the mutant hound doggos. You can kill them and they still scream after death. Kind of grisly, actually. Oh, yeah. Here's a map reference, by the way. There's White Springs there. And then you've got Cranberry Bog over there. And with those little bits of flux that we picked out from the um, quests, we've actually got ourselves some fusion cores if we want. No thank you, but I've crafted all of the ammo that I sort of wanted from that. And you can hear that Super Duper went off there, so we got double for at least one of those. So we'll go back here. So almost back up to 1000 with the Ghost Rifle, which is pretty good.
I think I'm gonna leave things there. You get the point of this weapon, it's quite overpowered, and some of you might be annoyed at the fact that this is a duped weapon, but the main purpose of this video is just to show off what kind of damage it can do, because it's kind of interesting how this sort of... These sorts of overpowered weapons just are there. I feel like it's kind of an oversight on Bethesda's part. They really shouldn't... It shouldn't be allowed that two shots spawns with explosive. It's completely overpowered. Everybody runs around with it, breaking PvP. Yeah, it's not really good for the lifespan of this game because people are going to dupe it because who doesn't want these weapons, right? So, yeah, if they could just, like, discreetly remove this or nerf it so it doesn't really do as much damage in the future so all of the people with regular weapons can actually have a fighting chance in doing stuff, then I wouldn't be too mad. Also, this outfit is from the Mothman Museum, so if you want to grab that, go there. You'll need lockpick too, though. But that's enough from me. Thank you for watching, guys.